seen one. King Sharia and his new wife. Narrator, voiceover. In distant mythical times, there was a king called Sharia. King Sharia, the Sassanid monarch. One day, he found out that his wife and the concubines of the era indulged in orgies with the slaves and the eunuchs of the palace while he was away hunting or at war. This fact drove him mad, so he ordered that everyone be killed. After that, Shariar conceived a terrible plot for revenge against all other women. He decided that he would marry a virgin, possess her, and then behead her at dawn. <laughs> the terrified parents of the young virgins began fleeing the Sassanid kingdom. However, unbelievable as it may seem, one beautiful girl <coughs> called Shahrazad, the vizier's daughter, asked her father to let her marry the bloodthirsty sovereign. The vizier, the king's most valuable minister, had no choice but to agree. On their wedding night, after having had sex with his new wife, King Shariar watched her, intrigued. The actress appears on stage as Sheridan, an adulteress of Mrs. Dent. She squats down and bows her head. The actor appears on stage as King Shariar, and begins walking around her, <coughs> does not take his eyes off her. You are beautiful, Scheherazade. I am pleased after having possessed you. <laughs> <laughs> you have made me enjoy sex in a way I barely remember. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. But it is not because of your beauty that I am looking at you like this. <laughs> I want to unravel the secret hidden under your attractive figure. Boss. What is your age, Shahrazad? Shahrazad, that boy is essential. To offer you a very pleasant life, to satisfy your whims, to make you enjoy sex every night as tonight. You are lying! <laughs> you know you are going to be my wife just for a few more hours. You know that you will be beheaded by the executioner's scimitar at dawn. Just like the other young women I married in the course of this year. But they did not volunteer to marry me. They were sacrificed by my soldiers. On the contrary, you wanted to be my wife. What? Shahaza, without burning a hair. To be your wife, even for one night, is the highest honor a woman of this kingdom can aspire to, my lord. You are lying again! Oh. Perhaps dying does not matter to you. Perhaps the idea of being the king's wife, at least for one day, satisfies your vanity. So this is the price you are willing to pay. To be honest, your determination to marry me is intriguing. <laughs> but I will discover your reasons. The knight still has enough hours to get the secret out of you. Didn't you know that I hate women? <laughs> I knew it very well. Boss. You are not the only king who has hated us. In the course of history, there have been others. I hope you will not suffer the same fate as Prince Kamar al-Zaman, Shariman's son, king of the Kaladin Isles. He hated women, too. What, what, what happened to that prince? <laughs> who was he? The orchestra plays the music that will be used as a late motive every time Shahrazad begins telling a story. The music will also be used as background music in certain episodes of the action. Scene 2. The prince who hated women. <laughs> Shahrazad, with the sensual voice. The prince Kamar al-Zaman was the most handsome young man ever seen in the kingdom of the Kaladin Isles. He was as slender as a willow and as delicate as a gazelle, and his talent for arts, letters, and sciences was exceptional. He was very solemn, and he hated amusing pastimes. The day he turned 20 years old, his father, King Shariman, decided to abdicate in favor of Kamar al-Zaman. However, to be able to succeed to the throne, the prince needed to get married. The actor turns into Kamar al-Zaman. Kamar al-Zaman, with determination. I am sorry, father. I am not attracted to women at all. <laughs> I have read about their wiles and the 
deception. I know that they muddle everything. And they make their husbands waste their time and lose their patience. I despise them. The king of the Caledon Isles thought that it was a youthful caprice, so he let a year pass before asking again whether his son was willing to get married in order to succeed to the throne. Get married? Me? I'd rather die. Haven't I told you before that I despise those scheming, greedy, useless beings known as women? <laughs> I will never get married, father. The king Shariman waited six more months, thinking that the prince would give in sooner or later. But this time, instead of speaking with his son alone, the king spoke with the prince in front of the council of the kingdom, before the emirs, viziers, chamberlains, national heroes, and the military of the Caledon Isles. Shariman asked Kamar al-Zaman, have you finally seen reason, my son? Kamar al-Zaman, curious. The damn marriage issue again? <laughs> How many times must I tell you, father? I will never get married. What do I have to do to make you understand once and for all? Let's be done with it. This answer enraged the King Shariman, who then shut his son in the darkest tower of his fortress, with armed guards at the door day and night. The king thought this punishment would make the prince learn his lesson and... Pause. Oh, sir, the dawn breaks through the windows. Isn't it time for... The actor turns into Sharia again. The time for your death, Shaharazad. <laughs> it is true. The executioner is waiting for you. The scimitar is ready. He pauses. But before that, <laughs> I would like to know what happened to that prince from Mar al -Zaman. The execution can be postponed until tomorrow. Go on, Shahrazad. The lights changed in the stage. Dawn was breaking when Shahrazad announced it. Now, lights turn off and the stage remains in complete darkness for a few seconds to suggest that the day has passed. When lights turn on again, the sky as an intense indigo color, and the round moon is an exaggerated yellow, which creates an atmosphere of never get night. <coughs> a female genie lived in a well full of bats and spider webs just around the corner of the tower in which Kamar al Zaman was imprisoned. She was a sylph named Maymuna. Maymuna noticed the light of an oil lamp coming from the tower and was suddenly curious. Turning herself into air, she snuck into the cell. And when she saw the sleeping young man, Mimuna exclaimed open-mouthed. Mimuna, voice over. God bless the creator of this marvel! <laughs> <laughs> Mimuna remained dazzled. She continued with her night fluttering and met another real genie, Danash, who came from a family of unfaithful genies. The actor turns into Mimuna, while the actor turns into Danash. Hey, Danash! I know Mimuna! <laughs>
judgment about women was completely foolish. <laughs> I will apologize to the king on my knees tomorrow, and I will ask him to perform the wedding with this dream creature as soon as possible. But would it be wrong if I caress her? <laughs> and what if I kiss her? Oh, my body burns with desire to touch her. Is this what the love extolled by poets feels like? What priceless happiness it would be to spend the rest of my life with such an exquisite being. She has a golden ring. I will take it off her and I will wear it so that she will realize that we're engaged when she wakes up. <laughs> what is happening to me? Why does sleep overcome me suddenly? I, I do not want to sleep yet. The actors turns into the new world. Where am I? What does all this mean? <laughs> Who brought me to this place? Oh God, a man! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 